Okay, we've returned another integral. This one's from the Berkeley Math Tournament 2020, problem number 10. We have the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of x over tan x dx. Okay, this one looks pretty intimidating at first, but there's actually a pretty good way to handle this. Just the first thing I'm thinking about here is if I take tan x and just break it up into sines and cosines, and then just flip this so the cosine comes into the numerator and rewrite it, What's going to happen now is we're going to have x cosine x dx all over sine x. And then looking at it this way, it's in pretty good shape for integration by parts. Kind of separating it out is what we can do. If I differentiate x, that's going to resolve to 1 or 0 or whatever. And then we can definitely integrate this thing over here. So let's see how this is going to work with the di method over here to the right. Again, differentiating x and integrating this stuff. Derivative of x is going to be just 1. Integral here, now just keep in mind this is the same thing as cotangent of x. The integral of this is going to be natural log absolute value sine x. You could do it out, like if you did a u substitution for sine, then you have the derivative right here in the numerator. Get the same thing, natural log sine x. So then we have part of the solution here on the diagonal, but then the second part of this, this row here is going to be an integral, while the minus up front 0 pi over 2, natural log, absolute value, sine of x. But this here is an integral I've done before, so I know this is going to work. There's going to be a few steps. It's not simple, but we can definitely do this one. This here, this first part, we need to evaluate this from just from 0 to pi over 2. So let's try to handle this part first, just evaluating this. So if you plug in pi over 2, we're going to have pi over 2, Natural log sine pi over 2 is 1, so we end up with natural log 1 here. But natural log 1 is 0, so the first piece is all going to be 0. Then the next part, we plug a 0 in here. This is going to be 0 times natural log sine of 0. But then clearly this part is also going to 0. So this whole piece is going away. And so I'll just clean up the board, then we can focus on this integral and make sure we include that minus sign in front. Now here with this integral, with our bound setup going from zero to pi over two and having the sign here, this is a good case to use King's principle on this. When we do this, what's gonna happen? Just using the formula, the bounds are gonna stay the same, first of all. And when we look at our f of b plus a minus x value, we just add the bounds. So we get pi over two minus x, and we input that for the x here. So what's gonna happen is we're gonna have natural log sine of pi over two minus x. This right here is going to be the complementary angle for sine, which is going to produce just cosine of x. So what I want to do now is let's just kind of label everything. If our original integral is i, then all this stuff is also i, so we're saying this is the same as this. So what I want to do is let's just add this one to this one, and we'll have two copies of our integral. We'll have two copies of our integral, or just 2i. When I do this, I'm going to bring them all into one integral sign, factor a minus sign out front, and let's see what we have. We're going to be going. 0 to pi over 2, natural log sine x plus, because I factor the minus out, so this is going to be plus, natural log cosine x dx. And now by log properties, we can take these two, we're adding them so we can multiply them together, or we can multiply sine times cosine, and this is going to become natural log sine x times cosine x. I'm leaving a little space in front here. The reason is, because we notice, if this was just a 2 here, then this expression is the same thing as sine 2x. I don't want to change it though, right? So let's just divide off that 2, so we're just multiplying by 1. Let's write it like this. But then again, using log properties, we're dividing, so let's separate this out and write it as natural log sine 2x minus natural log of 2. And then when we put this back, we'll put it back as two separate integrals. So the first one will have minus 0 to pi over 2, just using this piece natural log sine 2x. Now for this second part, let me get rid of this so we have a little bit of space. Now for this one, we'll distribute the minus in to the minus and get a plus in front of the second integral. So we have plus, still going 0 to pi over 2, and this is just going to be natural log of 2. But this here, this is a constant, which we can bring up front, integrate 1 here, right? So maybe let's just evaluate this while we have it here. So this is going to be, we'll have their natural log 2 in front, Integrating 1, that's going to be x, and we're just evaluating from 0 to pi over 2 on this. Evaluating the 0, that's going to be nothing. Plug in pi over 2, we end up, we can write this as pi natural log 2 over 2. 
Now here, we're getting closer. The thing I wanna notice, this integral right here is really similar to our I value that we have over here. The only trouble is we have this 2x here. So what I'm gonna do on that, because I'm trying to get it back to relate it back. Usually with King's principle, you wanna add them together or relate back to something we had earlier. So let's take care of the 2x with a u substitution. I'll make u equal to 2x, then du is gonna be just 2dx. So to set this up for the substitution, let's just kind of multiply in a two right here and multiply a one and a half in front so we're not changing it. And when we do the substitution, let's just see what happens. We're gonna have minus one half in front. Now the bounds are gonna change. We plug pi over two in here, pi over two times two. Now the upper bound becomes pi. We plug a zero and that stays the same. Then here, now this is gonna be our u. So this is gonna become natural log sine of u. And then this is all gonna be du over here. And I'm almost ready to clean up the board, but let's do one more thing. Let's actually isolate our i. So if I divide off two right here, divide two here, divide two here, then over here, this is all gonna be over four. And then this one's gonna become minus one fourth. And now we have this back looking like this over here, except for now we've ruined our upper bound. Now this is pi instead of pi over two. So I need to fix that, but let me clean up the board and we'll try to finish it off. Okay, now at this point, I'm just looking to fix this upper bound so I can add it back with one of our earlier integrals, this one right here. And at this point, it does feel like we're kind of going round and round in circles because we change one thing and then we break something else. So, so for this, we can actually use this other principle in order to reduce the bounds and bring the two out front. We have to do a check on it. What we're checking is we want to check this f of 2a minus x value, where in this case, our 2a is going to be pi. So we want to check, we need f of pi minus x to equal f of x. And so in this case, our f of x is gonna be just this, I mean, actually f of u, right? It's gonna be f of u is gonna be this natural log sine of u. So for our f pi minus x, let's write it as f pi minus u actually, right? We're gonna to wanna to check natural log sine of pi minus u. But for this here, this is actually the supplementary angle formula that tells us that sine pi minus u, this is gonna be the same thing as sine of u. So just making it clear, this thing is gonna be the same thing as natural log sine of u, and that's the same thing as our f of u. So this principle works, and what that's gonna allow us to do is we can reduce our bounds right here, cutting it in half. So going ahead with this, we'll have this minus one fourth in front, but now we're bringing, with this principle, we're bringing a two out front, and cutting this bound in half, so this is gonna go from pi to pi over two, then this is just gonna become the same thing, natural log sine u, everything else here is gonna be the same. But now we finally did it because this thing right here, this, technically with the minus sign, right? So this is almost I. If I bring the, let's bring the minus sign over here, right? So if I just do it this way, right? Then with the minus sign in front, this thing is the same thing as this, this is I. Two times one fourth, I'll clean this up and write it as one half. And then what I really should do is let's include all of this and this is actually gonna be one half I. So in order to solve for i, let's subtract half i here. That's gonna cancel all this out. Subtract half i here. So on the left side, we have one i minus a half i. That's gonna give me half i. And then all we have left, we cancel out all this. So what we have left here on the right side is pi ln two over four. Multiply by two on both sides. Then we isolate our integral i. Cancel two with four here. And so for my final solution to this, we just get pi ln2 over 2. Okay, there you have it. Good one from the Berkeley Math Tournament. Thanks everyone for watching. Have a good day.